What's up you guys, it's Hannah, welcome back to my channel. Uh, before we get started, I'm gonna address the most important thing about this entire video. And that is that my shirt does in fact say, have yourself a hairy little Christmas. So. I think that tells you all that you need to know. We could probably just end this video now. I'll see you guys next week. Psych, we have an entire video to get into and I'm really excited for this one because as you guys all read, you guys can all read, you guys all read the title. Today, I am going to be doing some holiday DIYs that are perfect to give as gifts. They're super easy and they are inexpensive. I made a massive holiday DIY video last year. I think I did 10. So many of them I love so much. Some of them were fails, okay, I'm not gonna lie, some of them were fails, but I have improved my craft since last year, and today I am coming to you with four more DIYs. In this video, I wanted to make these as simple as possible and also super affordable because it's no secret that this year has been very difficult for everybody mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, you know, and the holiday season is not about giving gifts, it's about happiness and love and joy and showing people that you love them and care about them. You don't need to buy expensive stuff for people in order to get that message across. And honestly, for me personally, I prefer to give handmade gifts because I think that they are so much more heartfelt and sentimental and also you can customize them more. It's just super personalized for the person. And you guys know that I love DIYs. I love crafting and I love the holidays so much. That's what we're gonna be doing today. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing that I made for this video is kind of like a spin on a picture frame. It's like a combination of, you know, those like wooden signs that you can get that have quotes and stuff on them and also a picture frame. I have really been enjoying the picture frames that have like a little clip or a clothespin that you put the picture on. I'll insert a picture. It's kind of more difficult to explain it. I can just show you. But I wanted to pretty much make a wooden picture frame slash sign combination. So it has like a picture and then a quote or some other saying or writing on it that kind of like matches who you're giving it to. You will see what I mean by that when I show you how to make it in a second because I did mine for my grandma and I hope that she's not watching this. So grandma, if you're watching this right now or if any of my other family members are watching this and you feel like you won't be able to keep a secret, I don't know, turn this video off. I don't wanna give this away. So I did mine for my grandma and it's a picture of my grandpa and I. A lot of the supplies that I had for this, I had around my house already because I have like a frick load of crafting supplies. Things that I didn't have were super inexpensive to get from the craft store. So that's what we're gonna be doing first. And now let's get into the supplies. First and foremost, we have this wooden pallet, which actually has a hanging thing on the back and also a stand, some Gorilla Glue to attach the clothespin, paint markers to write our quote on the board, and then obviously the mini clothespins that we'll be using to hold our picture. The first thing that I'm doing is figuring out how I want to arrange my pictures on this. I'm using these two Polaroids just for size reference because I thought that that's what I wanted to do at first, but then I found this picture of my grandpa and I, so I decided to go with this one, but obviously you can use any picture you want, any size picture you want. But I am just taking one of my mini clothespins and I am gluing that in place and then holding it for 30 seconds. I wasn't exactly sure what quote I wanted to write on this, so I, of course, took to Pinterest and looked up some quotes to get some inspiration. So once I figured out what quote I wanted, I made sure that my picture was in place so that I could write around it, and I sketched out the quote with a pencil. Obviously, this is just to make sure that I don't royally f up. I also really like to do calligraphy lettering, so I always look up a calligraphy alphabet on Pinterest and use it as a reference when I do this. I am now just sketching out the calligraphy part. I've gotten a lot better at this since last year, so I'm really proud of myself. Then once everything is sketched out, I am going over all of it with my white paint marker. This is a fine tip paint marker, which I think works best, especially because it will bleed a little bit if you're working on a wood surface like this one. 
The key to calligraphy that I've found is that you want to make the line thicker on any downstrokes. So you will see what I mean by that as you watch me do this, but I always go over my sketch one time just without doing any emphasis on the downstrokes. And then I go back and then make those lines thicker so that it ends up looking like this. So once I finished going over all of my sketching with my paint marker and making it look the way that I want it to, that is it for this one. It's really simple and straightforward, but also super sentimental and meaningful and would definitely be an awesome gift to give anybody. For our second DIY, I wanted to try my hand at jewelry making a little bit. Okay, that sounds a lot more intricate than it really was. I pretty much wanted to make a necklace, obviously a personalized one, duh. I used to make charms out of clay when I was younger and I would put them on bracelets and stuff. So I have done a little bit of this before. So I had a bit of an idea of what I wanted to do here. Pretty much just went to the craft store. I went to the eating and jewelry making aisle. Every craft store has one. What I love about this is that you can literally get a chain or a pack of them. They sell them in packs too. And you can put any charm you want on it. You could spell things out with letters. You could just put like a heart charm. Like what, there are just so many different charms that you can find at the craft store. They have tons on Etsy. So there's lots of options here to make it perfect for the person that you're giving it to. Really, really excited about this one. And I think that it turned out really, really cute. And also the last one turned out, oh my God. If I do this on myself, I'm really proud of it. So we're gonna keep this momentum going and we're gonna get into this second DIY. First we have our chain. I chose a 16 inch one because I like my necklaces to be a bit shorter. And then we have some pliers so we can work with the jump rings. And I know that these are a bit expensive, but craft stores literally always have 40% off coupons. So check the website. I'm sure you can get a discount. And then some jump rings to attach the charms to the chain. And finally some cute jewelry bags for storage. The first thing I'm doing for this one is laying the chain out flat and trying to figure out where I want the middle point to be because I have three charms that I want to put on. So I want to make sure that the second charm is in the middle. You know what I mean? So it looks correct. I don't know. So once I found the middle point, I'm taking one of these little jump rings and I am using my pliers to open it. And then I am using this jump ring to attach the charm to the chain. So I'm putting the jump ring through both the chain link and the top of the charm. And then I am closing the jump ring to try and make it as secure as possible. So here is the first charm securely attached to the chain with the jump ring. And now I'm just going to repeat the same process and attach the other two charms on either side of the E. I'm gonna count the number of chain links in between each to make sure that they are equal so that it looks symmetrical, you know what I mean? So here is the finished necklace. It was literally so easy. It took me like 10 minutes to make this. And then I'm just adding a little bit of flair to this gift by putting it in this cute little gift bag that I found at the craft store. You can find these probably anywhere, just a mini bag to complete this super cute gift. third DIY. This is very on brand for this year. I'm making a mask hanger hanging type. What? It's a mask hanger. Why am I being like, this? is this, am I okay? I'm going to be making a mask hanger and you can put as many hooks on it as you want. You can get whatever size you want. You could paint it if you wanted to. You can write whatever you want on it. You know what I mean? I got this idea because I know a lot of people just put command strips on their walls, like the command hooks, just hang their masks that way. I've seen tons of people do that. I do that too. Like I have that on my wall as well, but I wanted to upgrade to an actual hanging cute thing with actual hooks on it that I can organize my masks on. That's pretty much what I'm going to do here. Again, just went to the craft store and in the the wood aisle they had wood planks that already had a piece of rope on it so that you could hang it i don't know if that was just the craft store that i went to but they may have some version of that at other ones if not then it's super easy to just buy a plain plank of wood and attach some type of hanging fixture to it so that you can hang it on your wall you could literally make one of these for anyone this year i think that it would be super cute i might actually do this i have to think of somebody to give it to but i think it would be cute to do like a family one so for each of the hooks you put someone's name anywho that's what we're doing for this third one and let's get into the supplies. First up, we have our wood sign, which conveniently already has rope on it to hang on the wall. And then we have some cup hooks to hang the masks from and paint markers, of course, to write our quote on the board. 
The first step for this DIY is very similar to the first one that I showed you. I am going on to Pinterest and finding some inspiration for what I want to write on this little wooden board. And then I'm sketching my little saying out with my pencil before going over it with the paint marker. I did find that this paint marker was a bit more difficult to work with. It bled a lot more than the white one did, so it got a little bit messy, but I tried to make it work. I'm using a mix of calligraphy and print like I did on the last one as well. So once I have my words painted on, I am actually going to break out a ruler and I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna try to measure four equal distant points of where I want to put the hooks. I did my best with this. They're definitely not 100% equal, but who cares? So then I am breaking out these hooks that I got from the craft store. They're actually cup hooks or also could be called mug hooks, but they just look like this. They have the little screw on the end. So pretty much all you have to do is push and twist to get them in the wood. It's a little bit hard. I'm not going to lie. Maybe I'm just weak, but despite that, I still feel like this is definitely the easiest overall method. So once you've attached all of your hooks, you're literally done. Again, this is super quick and easy and also very customizable. our fourth and final DIY. This one definitely is on brand for me. This is something that we should have all expected. We should have seen this coming. And that is a candle. Wow. Not just any candle though. We are going to be, how do I want to word this? Like what do I want to call this? I'm just going to call it a thrifted candle, I guess. I went to the thrift store. I went to the home section and they have tons of mugs and glasses and other random knickknacky type of containers there or things that you could use as containers. I love that section of the thrift store. It's truly one of my favorites because there's just so many random cool things that you can find in there and they're all so, so inexpensive. I just went to that section of the thrift store and I found this little, I don't even know, is it a cup of some sort? Only 99 cents and I decided that I wanted to turn it into a candle. I wanted to put a candle in there, make it all cute and everything. So that is what I did. As we all know, I have a problem. My candle collection is quite extensive. Breath. I decided that I wanted to reuse some candles from there and put them into this DIY to give to somebody else. What I was looking for were two candles that were either similar or the exact same that just I had used up almost all of it, but there was still a little bit at the bottom. You know what I mean? I actually found two of the exact same candle from Bath and Body Works. It's the Marshmallow Fireside one. So I decided to take both of those and repurpose them into this DIY. If I didn't have two that were the exact same, I probably would have tried to choose two other candles that were like complimentary or that I thought the scents would mix well together. I'm really excited about this. You guys know I love candles. So let's just get right on into it. The first thing you're gonna need is a container of some sort. Like I mentioned, I got this one at the thrift store for 99 cents. You're also gonna need some candle wick. I like to get the ones with the round discs at the bottom. And then to spice up the plain mug, I wanted to tie a cute tag around it. So I picked up some gift tags, twine, and a Sharpie for that. So earlier this morning, I actually put the two candles that I'm planning on using for this in the freezer and I'm letting them sit for a few hours because that is supposed to help you to get the wax out easier. Next, I'm gonna set up the tag that I want to tie around the candle. So I pretty much just wanted to write the name of the candle on this tag. It's kind of like a label, I guess. So I'm just writing Marshmallow Fireside on it and I did this a few times. I had some trial and error. And even when I thought that I made one that I finally liked, I ended up changing it anyways. That'll happen in a second. So I cut a fairly long piece of twine and I just wrapped it around the top of this mug and tied it in a super cute bow if I do say so myself. And there is the updated tag that I made. So that is it for the tag slash label situation. Now getting into setting up the candle and preparing it for pouring the wax. I f 
fucked up here. You will see it in a second, but the way that I just placed the wick in there with nothing to secure it, that's gonna be an issue. But for the time being, we're just gonna keep chugging along and pretend like everything is fine. So I just went ahead and removed the candles from the freezer. They have been sitting in there for a solid five hours, and now I am attempting the extraction surgery to get this wax out of the damn jar. The first one went pretty well, I'm not gonna lie, it came out in one solid piece. The same cannot be said for the second one, but I eventually got it out in many pieces after a while. So in order to melt this wax down, we need to make a double boiler situation. So I'm taking all the wax pieces and putting them in a Pyrex measuring cup because it's safe to be put in heat pretty much. And I am taking a bigger pot, filling it with water and putting it on the stove, sticking the Pyrex measuring cup inside of the pot and turning the stove on high to boil the water. So the water in the pot obviously will get very, very hot as it is going to be boiling, which will then cause enough heat to melt the wax that is located inside the measuring cup. In total, it'll probably take about 20 minutes for the wax to melt completely but make sure to watch it though because you never want to leave a pot on the stove unattended safety first you guys yeah so this is where it hits the fan as you can see the wick is clearly just chilling with nothing to hold it up i don't know why i thought that i could get away with that and i just simply didn't think about the fact that i would have to hold it there until the wax dried Shit, i have up one thing led to another i realized that i royally up, tried to balance it, and then I just said fuck it because the bottom part melted off in the wax. So I had to get an entire new wick and then I finally did what I knew I was supposed to do the whole time because I've done this before. I don't know why I didn't do it, but anyway, I wrapped the wick around a pencil and let it dangle in there so it was secured and it could dry, okay? Okay, bless. So long story short, ladies and gents, always wrap the wick around a pencil or something and let it hang into the wax that way so that it will stay straight and in place while the wax dries. So then I'm just clipping the excess wick off. I don't know why the hell there is a big dip in the middle of that. I've never seen it crack like that before, but you know, first time for everything, so I love that. After that little mishap though, it still turned out super cute in my opinion, and I am proud of it nonetheless. All right, you guys, so that was the last DIY that I had for you today. I honestly am so thrilled with how all of these turned out. I'm just really proud of them and I'm really, really excited to either give them as gifts or use them for myself. I don't think anything will ever beat the Bob Ross coasters. If you guys don't know what the heck I'm talking about with the Bob Ross coasters, you have to watch that video. I have never been more proud of how anything turned out ever in my entire life than how those coasters turned out in that video. That is my best work and I don't know if I'll ever be able to top it. And also my calligraphy. Can we talk about that for a second. I know, I know this is an outro, but my calligraphy since last year has improved tenfold. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of myself. You know what? Growth is what we're here for. Continuous improvement, personal growth, learning, personal development. Okay. We love to see it. We love to see it. That is going to be the end of today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. If you guys make any of these DIYs, please tweet me pictures or post them on your Instagram stories and tag me in them. I want to see what you guys make. I hope you guys have an awesome holiday season. That is gonna be it. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've stayed until this point in the video, comment down below, I'm a real one because you're a real one. If you wanna see more videos from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I post a new video every single Sunday. And if you forget, that I post a new video every single Sunday or if you just want to get notified right when I post a new video make sure you turn on my post notifications as the little bell icon so that you get notified right when I post a new video and yeah I think that's it I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next video bye oh.